Imagine that you bought a house. There's a computer in the garage that we can't take with us, but it's a special computer. This computer has been designed by we don't know how, but it has tapped into all the wisdom of the universe. And all you ever have to do when you have a question or a problem or a goal of any kind is go down and sit there at the keyboard and put, program it in and then push submit and all the wisdom of the universe will go to work to answer your question or help you to achieve your goal. And if you had a, such a computer, would you use it on a regular basis? Would you be down there all the time if you wanted to increase your income, improve your health, change your relationships, repair your business, anything else? Well, you do have it, and that is this superconscious mind that we'll talk about. The difference between superior people and average people is superior people use their superconscious mind more often. Average people use it sporadically. It's almost like car crashes. They occasionally bump into an idea and think, wow, that's an interesting idea, and then go on home uh, and watch television. And the superconscious mind and the superconscious capability is hidden within yourself. And then I'll show you how you can use it. We've spent the entire day now talking about goals and purpose and mission. Now the question is, how do we achieve our goals and purpose and our mission at the highest level possible? And this is the key. So we say the following are the characteristics of your superconscious mind. First of all, it has access to all data stored in your subconscious mind. That means everything that you have ever learned, everything you've read, experienced uh, in your lifetime has been stored away. And when your superconscious mind is functioning, it can go back into this vast treasure trove, library of your mind, and it can pick out information, any piece of information. Sometimes you'll have a piece of information, an idea that will be from something you read or saw in a movie or had in a conversation decades ago. And it will just pop out when you're working with your superconscious mind to solve a problem or achieve a goal. The second thing is it can indiscriminate between valid and invalid data. Is your superconscious mind can actually bring you data and it will only bring you valid data. The, the information it brings will be correct. You may have heard something or learned something that may have not been correct. Uh, a date, a time, a place, a fact, a figure. But when your superconscious mind is sorting information, it knows exactly what is correct and what is incorrect, which is why a superconscious solution is always correct, because it's always based on valid data. Now, two, it has access to data outside of your experience. It can tap into the universal mind, and all data that's available in the universe is available to the, your superconscious when you tune into it. It's very much like tuning into a massive receiving station in the universe. Now, with regard to yourself, uh, the, the way this works is that sometimes you'll have an idea and when you're sitting in this room, and I'll be talking about A and you'll have an idea about B. And it's been proven over and over again that when more than two people come together, a third mind is formed. And the third mind is almost like an ether in this room. And everyone in the room can tap into this ether, just like cloud computing, you can tap into this ether and you can have access to all the minds of everyone else in this room, which is why you will have an idea that will be completely different from anything that I'm talking about. It's just an idea that will shoot into your mind like those little lightning bolts in the, in the cartoons. You go, woo, write it down, write it down. I didn't say anything about it. People came up to me and say, you changed my life in your seminar when you said this thing. And I know I never said that thing, but she heard that thing so loud. There's, a, there's, there's a, a line from Emerson that perhaps summarizes this. He said, what you are shouts at me so loudly, I can't hear a word you're saying. When you get a super conscious solution, it will be like an incredible loud voice in the silence. You'll hear nothing, but it will be so loud inside of you that it'll block out anything else that you're thinking about at the time. Number three, everyone has at least four ideas per year any one of which would make them a millionaire. So if your goal is to become a millionaire, remember that the superconscious mind is trying to get you ideas to fulfill whatever it is that you want. It's interesting about the superconscious mind in that it is neutral as well. If you think of negative, angry thoughts, then you'll think of negative, angry ways to live, and you'll have negative, angry experiences as well. Mostly, however, it works when you are clear about something that you want or desire, it'll start to bring you ideas to, to achieve it. Um, many times you're walking, driving along and you'll have an idea for a product or a service or something that you could do that would serve other people. 
and you say, you know, why doesn't somebody do that? I mean, why doesn't somebody offer that? And the only difference between you and someone else is someone else took action on it. And then a week or a month or a year later, you'll look around, somebody will come out with that idea and they'll make a fortune. You say, I thought of that a year ago. I I was, remember I told you about that? Why didn't somebody do that? And they'll say, yes, but somebody else took action. Somebody else took action on it. But one of the hardest things of all is to trust your own ideas. People say, well, if I thought of it, it can't be any good. Because after all, it's only me. So there must be something flawed with the idea. But you're, it's astonishing how many people have created wonderful lives with an idea that was completely outside anything they'd ever done before. So listen, the ideas are coming, the ideas are there, and they shoot through your mind. Many people will carry a little recorder. Many people will carry a little notebook. They'll put a notebook by the edge of the bed. They'll stop the car and write it down quickly. Because very often, the rule is what you're seeking for is seeking for you. What you, what, what you want wants you. And so when you decide that you want something, it's time to tune in and get it. Say number three, it functions 24 hours a day. That means once you have programmed a goal, as you have, both a goal and a mission, a major goal, and the more detailed you write out the goal, the more the superconscious mind can just really get its powers into it. If you say, I want to be rich, I don't want to be thin, well, that's got very, very little power. But when you're specific about how much you want to earn and when you want to earn it, even if you're specific about all the things you could do with the money, sometimes writing down 25 things you would do if you were financially independent really activates the superconscious mind because of all the emotion with which you charge it. Remember, if you have a thought without an emotion, it has no impact. If you have an emotion without a thought, it has no direction. But if you have a thought of something you want, combined with an emotion of excitement and confidence and happiness that you can achieve it, it's like a powerful bullet and it activates all your mental powers. Once you program the goal in, which you have done by writing it down, it goes to work 24 hours a day. And it's sort of like planting seeds. If you plant grass seed, what will happen is the grass will spring up in a day or two. If you plant a bamboo tree, what happens with a bamboo tree? Well, if you ever heard the story of the bamboo tree, is you plant a bamboo tree and you water it and you fertilize it and nothing happens. You water it and you fertilize the seed, nothing happens for a year. And you keep doing that, nothing happens for two years and you keep doing it, nothing happens for three or four or five years. In the fifth year, it grows 60 feet into the air. It suddenly germinates and explodes into the air. And sometimes it's the same with a career or a goal or a book. Look at, uh, what is her name, Rawlings? who had this fantastic idea to write the Harry Potter book for her children, working on welfare. Became one of the richest women in the world, first billionaire author in the world, and she just had these ideas, and she worked and worked and worked. So sometimes some seeds will grow quickly, some seeds will take longer. What you do is you just have to keep watering and fertilizing with confidence and faith until the seed springs into flower. So it's working 24 hours a day while you're awake, while you're sleeping, while you're busy doing something else. Your superconscious mind is on the job. Number uh, four, it automatically and continuously solves every problem on the way to achieving your goal. It automatically and continuously solves the problem, one problem after another. Now, there's a basic rule that you need to understand is that in order for you to achieve something greater than you've ever achieved before, you have to learn certain lessons. You've got to be schooled, and usually schooled in the, in, in the school of hard knocks. You have to make mistakes, you have to make temporary failures, and have disappointments and setbacks. This is the price you pay. But as I said before, when God wants to send you a gift, he wraps it up in a problem. So what superior people do is they look for the lesson in every problem that they have, and the lesson is often sent to you by your superconscious mind. And so whenever you have a problem, you will often, you'll get a, a solution or an insight to do something and do it. Um, and it'll continually solve every problem progressively. This is all the great inventions, all the great musical concertos were all solved one step at a time, one scientific problem at a time. Poor, uh, when you say poor, Thomas Edison did 11,300 experiments before he found the bulb that lit up and stayed lit. Reporter went to Thomas Edison after his 5,000th experiment, and the reporter from the New York Times said, Mr. Edison, why do you waste so much time on this invention? You've failed 5,000 times, according to your own admission. 
He said, young man, he said, you don't understand the way the world works. He said, I have not failed at all. I have successfully identified 5,000 ways that will not work, which puts me 5,000 ways closer to the way that will work, and I will find that way. Later, Edison explained that when I decide to achieve a goal or to invent something, as far as I'm concerned, all I need to do is remove all the ways that don't work until all that is left is the way that will. And that's how he approached every invention. He became the most prolific inventor in history. And all of his ideas came from the superconscious mind, which we'll talk about in a couple of seconds. Okay, number uh, five, it's capable of goal-oriented motivation. Now, this is very important to understand. The superconscious mind cannot work without a goal. It's just like a, 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 uh, an Exocet missile, a heat-seeking missile, has got to be targeted on something. And so when you set a goal, as you have in the previous session, now the superconscious mind can really grab onto that goal and go to work for it. Here's the point is, as we said before, when you set off a missile, it's already targeted on a target. When you set off your own Exocet missile, it will find the target wherever it happens to be, anywhere in the world and under any circumstances. You can just set it off and it has the ability to seek out the goal that you're looking for. And that's why it often brings it to you in the most remarkable ways. So you have to stay really, really wide open. So start to be sensitive to it almost like a kid at Christmas. So it, uh, is capable, it releases ideas and energy for goal attainment. As a matter of fact, it is a source of what is called free energy. Now, free energy is the energy that Nikola Tesla, the great electrical genius, was able to tap out of the air and light up an entire studio. He would bring people, scientists, over. He would have his whole studio lit up with no wires and no connection, no generators, and then he would show them in the most miraculous way how he could turn on all the lights by extracting energy from the air. No one has ever been able to do it before or since. But Nikola Tesla was able to do it, and which is why he's called the greatest electrical genius in history. Free energy comes, for example, when you're really excited about something. I'll give you an example. When a person, especially a woman, is getting married, she goes, gets by on about three or four hours sleep a night, and all the rest of the time, because of the high energy in the whole uh, upcoming ceremony, she lives on free energy. And sometimes when you're really excited, mothers live on free energy as well, especially if they have two or three young children who are incredibly time consuming from, from basically five or six in the morning until midnight, they are able to tap into a form of free energy. And when you have a goal, what happens is you tap into this form of free energy, almost like taking a plug and plugging it upward into the superconscious mind and you just bound with energy. And it's the energy of the motivation and the excitement that comes from the goal. It doesn't happen in the absence of a goal. Uh, you must have clear, specific goals in order to tap into this free energy. Now, number six, it responds to clear, authoritative commands. What we call positive affirmations is when you say, I earn this amount, I weigh this amount, I achieve this goal, the superconscious mind accepts it as a command. It's passed from your conscious mind through your subconscious mind and into your superconscious. It's almost like your subconscious mind are the, the workmen in the white coats who take the command from head office, your, sub, your conscious mind, your deciding mind, they take it and they pass it on to the supercomputer, to the super, to the superconscious. And the superconscious computer operators just simply put it in and it goes to work. But it needs clear authoritative commands. The most amazing thing that you've found throughout your life is that when you make a decision, that wonderful quote that Cam quotes, when you make a decision, nature moves too. All manner of things begin to happen that would not have happened in the absence of the decision. So very often you'll make a decision either to get in or get out, either to do it or not do it, to make a commitment or walk away, and that commitment suddenly triggers a whole series of, it, of activities and actions like a uh, dominoes. They just start to click. You get phone calls and you get letters and you get emails and all kinds of things begin to happen immediately after you make a very clear decision, <coughs> which means that you set a very clear goal. And writing the goal down, is, as we say, is very powerful. So make a decision that you're going to do or not do something, and then take the first step. Now, number seven, it grows in capability as it is used and believed in. The more trust you have in your superconscious mind, the faster it works for you. And the more calm and confident you absolutely believe that something will show up.
something will be fine. The most amazing thing is that something happens. And the, the more you practice with it and the more confidence you have, the faster it works for you. When I was first, first understood this, when, I, I, when, 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 when uh, long distance charges were very high back in the 80s, is I would visualize a person I needed to talk to on the other side of the country and they'd fire, they, they would phone me. And I could do this over and over again. Rather than me phoning them for 30 or 60 minutes, I'd visualize and they'd phone me. I just put it into the superconscious mind and I say, he or she will call by 11.30. By 11.30 the phone rings. Just and I did this over and over again. And the more confidence you have that it will work, the more rapidly it works for you. It takes a lot of confidence at the beginning, but that's all it takes. It doesn't cost any money. It merely requires a step of faith, a mental step of faith. Number eight, it operates best with an attitude of confident expectancy. I told you this before, but this attitude of confidently expecting great things to happen is the catalyst. It's almost like the ether in the air that causes the superconscious mind to activate even faster. So when you confidently expect that your goals will be reached, your problem will be solved, that everything will be well, when you confidently expect it, it just seems to come into reality. And the more it happens, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the better and faster it works. And there are many people who just get into tuning, almost like you get onto a beam when you're landing a plane. They get onto the beam of their superconscious mind and they just stay on that beam and they just do what feels right all the time. And they never make another mistake. And they make more progress in a few weeks or a few months than many people who are all over the place make in years if they make any progress at all. Number nine, it operates best under two conditions. The first condition is when you are concentrating 100% on the problem. 100%, you're just totally focused on the problem. And I'm going to give you a method to stimulate your superconscious a little bit later. But when you're totally focused on the problem, uh, suddenly ideas pop out. And that's why the very first thing you do when you have a problem is to write down every detail of the problem. When you have a goal, you write down every single thing you could think of that would help you to achieve the goal. And the more you write 10, 20, 30 things, the more likely it is that something will pop off the page. You hadn't even thought of it, or you may have thought about it years ago, and suddenly it's there again. You may have pulled it out from deep in your memory, and suddenly, it, and that's the key. That's what will make this work. And the other time is when you are concentrating 0% when your mind is busy elsewhere. So if you have not been able to solve the goal by s focusing on it single-mindedly, then walk away. This is taught, by the way, in all scientific schools, is you focus on the pro subject single-mindedly and then walk away from it and just let it go. And at a certain point, pow, the idea comes in. Go take a vacation, go for a sleep, take a nap, um, go for a walk, take the weekend off, get completely rested. It's called cerebration. That's the word, not celebration. But cerebration is where you let all the details kind of stew in your mind and bang up against each other until they knock off the spark of the right answer. So cerebration. Um, number 10, it brings you exactly the solution you require at exactly the right time. I remember I was flying back from Vancouver to Edmonton. I was going into a very, very highly charged business meeting on a very, very difficult subject. And I was just in a state of complete agitation. And then what I did is I did the quick affirmation technique. I constantly, I, 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 real, I rec, relaxed completely, visualized that this meeting goes exactly well, exactly perfectly. And as I walked in the door of the meeting, they're both waiting for me like lions waiting for fresh meat. As I walked in the door, the answer came full blown in my mind. And I just simply expressed the answer and it solved the problem completely. I still remember after that, I could not believe it. So therefore, when you're working for a solution too, very often, the solution will come at exactly the right moment for you, but it is time dated. You must act immediately. Let us say that you think of a goal, and the goal, the first thing that pops into your mind is phone so-and-so and ask him or her about this. And so when you get that, do it immediately. Sometimes you'll pick up the phone and call immediately, and they say, I'm glad you called. I was just leaving for the airport. I'm going to be in Europe for a month and out of contact. And if you had called them an hour later, they'd have already been gone and you wouldn't have able, been able to get through to them. Today, of course, you can with cell phones and get through to anybody. But the point is, when you get the idea, move quickly because it's time dated. And sometimes it's dated only for a few minutes. All right. Now, number 11, it will bring you the experiences you need to be successful. We learn 10 times more from a failure experience than from a success experience. 
So here is a lesson. If you are going through or you have been through a failure experience, let us say a temporary failure experience, take a piece of paper and write at the top of the page, what have I learned from this experience or what lessons, what lessons have I learned from this experience? Whether it's business or personal or relationships or selling or anything else, and then write down everything you've learned. And you'll be astonished at how much you have learned that if you don't write it down, you won't remember and you'll have a tendency to repeat. But what happens is when you write down everything you've learned from your negative experience, you program that in and you'll be astonished at how many lessons you can get from one setback. So it'll bring you the experiences. So when you get a setback or a difficulty, you say, aha, this has been sent to me to help me achieve my biggest goal. I wonder what the lesson is that I meant to learn in this experience. And my promise to you is if you look into every experience for a lesson, you'll always find at least one. And sometimes the lesson you'll find will be priceless and it will change your life forever.